it seems mm. that from the from from uh, decades back with the Apollo missions till now, uh, we haven't had uh, a lot of evolution in in the sort of spacesuits that um, have existed and that are used by astronauts. We we are we actually this is the golden age of um, creating new spacesuits. Um, once upon a time, you're very right. Um, there was a limited amount of uh, EVA spacesuits and contractors and providers. Um, and when you look back at footage from the Apollo missions, you can see that the astronauts were doing the best that they could with the what they had. So their center of gravity was quite high. It made them prone to falling over, um, especially on this deep, rocky, dusty lunar terrain, which wasn't easy to navigate, easy to navigate to begin with. Um, and then the um, their ability to bend at the waist was quite limited based on where their life support pack was. So they were really more using their knees to navigate. So it's actually quite exhausting. Um, and in addition, there was a lot of, of uh, pressure points. Um, and that was also a known issue with EVA suits during the shuttle uh, and even the ISS era, creating um, uh, subungual hemorrhages. So bruises under the fingernails, losing fingernails, creating pressure points on the shoulders. And so all of these lessons learned are critical towards evolving the next generation of spacesuits so we can get better fit, better mobility, better performance, and uh, better endurance for astronauts when they're out on these um, EVAs, which are already hours long, um, require lots of energy, lots of focus, lots of concentration. Um, and then also the survivability in these spacesuits. So the PLIS, the portable life support system, that little backpack um, on their backs does a lot of heavy lifting in terms of providing adequate oxygen oxygenation, temperature control, humidity control, and scrubbing, removing um, noxious um, uh, gases such as CO2 buildup from the spacesuit. Um, so being able to have a longer life um, is critical as we look towards doing more ambitious um, extravehicular activities on the moon and beyond. So um, what would be the top three engineering challenges from a medical uh, point of view to ensure that our astronauts are protected when they, let's say, work on a moon base or on Mars? Yeah, so I would say um, the top one and two are tied because they're a matter of survival. So it'd be radiation protection um, as well as um, the strength of your portable life support system. Um, so those those are not negotiable. You you really it's a place where you don't want to cut corners um, because the radiation um, exposure beyond uh, in deep space is you know is can be one of the showstopper. So, showstoppers if we don't adequately mitigate the exposure for astronauts. And then the last one would come down to comfort. Um, so what I mean is a suit that's ergonomic, that lets you move easily, that lets you, um, you know, uh, move your fingers, uh, move your hands in all, all um, axes, um, has adequate degrees of freedom. Um, because you're out there to perform work. You're there to explore the surface, maybe do some geological sampling, perform some science, um, maybe do some maintenance, um, and even some infrastructure building. So you need to be able to do that efficiently. So the ergonomics and comfort of the suit would be um, third in my view. You know, what we've seen in the past five years alone for evolution, you know, the fit of gloves, the fits of uh, suits, it's it's incredible. Um, and then, you know, I forgot to mention a fourth item on my wish list is uh, lunar dust repulsion. We know from the Apollo era that the lunar dust, the regolith is so fine and sticky. It got everywhere. It got in the suit joints. It clogged them up. So if they're able to, um, by virtue of their, even their, their polarity, repel lunar dust, um, which I believe has a negative charge, that's another bonus. Um, we're definitely getting there. Even SpaceX has entered the spacesuit game. They're familiar. Of, uh, they're very um, famously had their IVA suits um, for their um, Crew Dragon um, missions. Those um, very well recognized white suits that are out there. And now with the upcoming Polaris Dawn um, civilian mission. Um, they're pushing the boundaries because the commander of that mission, Jared Isaacman, has um, said that they're going to do the first civilian EVA or spacewalk. And so now Sp SpaceX has had to engineer a an EVA suit to be able to support that mission objective. Yeah, it just boggles the mind. Is there anything that space or any any part of of the entire space ecosystem that SpaceX doesn't have a finger in the pie? <laughs> 
You know, they're very committed to be humanity being a multi-planetary um, species. species. Yes. So I think I think their activities definitely reflect that. 